So hey everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Nier. Start of playthrough two. Right? Mm -hmm. There we go. Alright, now what happens here? Now we put on our reading glasses. Yeah, the Pokemon MOBA. Um good riddance. I mean, like, who cares? Oh. Here's where we start. Now we we're going right in. <laughs> We we in there. My mind has been confusing her with my sister this whole time. Here we go. It's true. That is the requirement. Tiny's dreams, discrimination. I'm not going to read this one. A sound of rain filled the village. The steep cliffs that surrounded the area magnified sound, causing even the slightest drizzle to rattle like a thunderstorm. Then wisps of smoke streamed from huts as the villagers huddled in their homes and waited out the rain. Scary. <laughs> a single child, however, had braved the downpour and was now wandering slowly toward the wooden, hawk-shaped weather vane at the center of town. Not a good place for a weather vane. But okay. The Wanderer reached the vein, which had existed for as long as any could remember, and stared. Well, not their fault if it was there before. The child's face was simultaneously delicate and fierce, like a teacup that had survived a shipwreck. That's a... Hmm. <laughs> Specifically, you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Very evocative uh, metaphor. Those traits combined with pale white skin to give the face an almost sexless quality. If the beak turns east, I go home. If it stays west, then I... I... The child boy. Rain slowly dripped down the young one's short hair and began its long descent to the ground. Come on. Come on! The child felt a slight breeze and watched as the veins slowly creeped to life. Spinning this way and that, for a moment, it finally settled with the beak pointing firmly toward the east. East? Really? Before the vein could move again, a jagged rock came spinning and tumbling through the air, finally striking home against the child's head. Because how dare that child watch this weather vane? Yeah. The force of the blow dropped the child to the ground as a hail of stones began to fall all around. Oh no. They found. I don't know if that was supposed to rhyme, but okay. A heartbreaking smile crept across the child's face as the stones continued their assault. Through the rain, the sound of multiple footsteps grew louder before a voice rang out. Yoo-hoo! Kaine! The voice belonged to Demo, worst of all the bull worst of all the bullies in the area. Oh, that's right. As Kaine struggled to stand, a final stone came skittering through the mud and bounced against her foot. <clears throat> Blood oozed from a cut above her eye and blurred her vision, but she could make out the shapes of Demo and his usual gang of idiots. The boy seemed taken aback for a moment by Kaine's seeming indifference to the blood dripping from her face, but quickly regained his bravado. What's up, freak? You like the rain? You getting all wet? Or did you finally decide to run away from home? Though she knew it was futile, Kaine turned to leave. <laughs> Before she could get more than a few steps, the other children scrambled to surround her, cruelty burning in their eyes. Kaine knew those were not the only eyes on her. The Tormentor's parents watched from the safety of their homes. She was attuned to this sensation. It was one she had experienced many times before. While some villagers simply turned a blind eye to the actions of their children, many encouraged it openly. In a society ruled by superstition and fear, Kaine was something to be hated, and if possible, destroyed. No, it doesn't have more text than game. It's just that the concentrations of text are extreme. So if you get more than, like, six lines of text in a row, it's going to be 300. Yeah, that's... that's yeah, that's about right. Uh, yeah, question. that's about right, yeah. Uh-huh. I didn't say you could leave, freak. Demo's words chewed at her like a worm through an apple. <sighs> he can't hurt me, she lied to herself. Be strong. Be brave. He can't hurt me. He can't hurt me. He can't hurt. Oh, look. The little freak is gonna cry. What's wrong? Are you sad that everyone hates you and wants you dead? No, I mean... 
Granny prayed for the rain to flood down and carry her away from a world that seemed to have no place for her. But if there were gods, they chose to ignore her. As Timo crept ever closer, the clouds began to thin and the rain slowed. Even the weather hates me. I'm useless. A failure. I wish Timo's rock had taken my head off. Dinah couldn't meet Timo's staring gaze. She lowered her eyes and stared at the muddy ground below. The bully moved forward until he was inches away. She could smell the scent of old meat on his bone. The boy grabbed Kaine's face with thick fingers and he yanked it upward. She tried to turn away, but he forced her gaze back and jammed his thumb against her eyelid to pry it open. You're a freak. No, I'm not. Did you just say no? You don't say no to me. No one says no to me. Not even taking his attention from Kaine. He called to his cohorts. Come on, guys. Let's skip the freak what she deserves. As soon as Dima finished, kicks and blows began to rain down upon Kaine. Dima paused, still grinning. Kaine curled up into a ball and tried to make the pain stop. I don't get you, freak. What you acting like a girl for, huh? Everyone knows what you really are. Kaine ignored the question, choosing instead to stare at the weather vane. He continued to point east, as if supremely confident about the future it had chosen for him. Go home? Yeah, that's a funny joke for some dead parents and no home to go to. Funny joke. Freak. Funny joke? Can't the children. Freak. 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 Kaine closed her eyes and listened to the rain, waiting for the pain to start again. As the clutching hands of the village children closed around her, she bent her mind to the sound of the rain, letting it become her world entire. The rain fell. But the pain never came. Only when the laughter of her tormentors turned to terrified cries did she dare open a single blood cake die. Kaine was shocked to see Demo sprawled on the ground, holding his head and screaming in pain. She could see blood welling from his faces between his fat, twisted fingers. Oh my god, he's crying. He's actually crying. Deprived of their leader, the, only ch the other children glanced back and forth between themselves as if waiting for someone to step forward and take charge. When no savior emerged, they began an uneasy shuffle away from Kaine. But the young girl was the least of their concerns. Instead, their attention was wrapped on the ancient woman standing a few feet away. After struggling for breath for a moment, she finally spoke in a voice thick with rage. <clears throat> Hurts like a bitch, don't it? Now I suggest you scatter before I throw another one. And if any of you little bastards ever touch my Kaine again, I'll do far worse than throw a rock. You can count on it. The old woman crouched down and gently touched the hand that Dima was using to cover the wound. Before he could think to protest, she ground her palm into the wound and twisted back and forth. Ow! He screamed, leaping to his feet. Stop it! What are you doing? Quit whining. Ain't no one ever died from scratch. You hit me with a rock, you stupid bitch! A big one! That thing could have killed me! The old woman shrugged. Death is the best cure for stupid. Dima's face twisted with rage at her words. Locking his eyes on Kaine, he took a step backward and spat off the ground. Get out! Leave this village. No one wants you here. Either of you. Seeing the old woman grab another stone, Timo and his companions turned trail and ran. Tail. As they fled, the old woman grabbed her side and barked out a single laugh. Ha! Look at the fat boy go. Guess he's healthy enough to run from a fight. The woman's smile faded as she turned her attention to Kaine. Kneeling down, she removed her shawl and placed it ar around the girl's shoulders, young girl's shoulders, and produced a cloth from the folds of her dress and began blotting at the blood on her forehead. Oh, Kaine, she said. Why didn't you fight back? You're stronger than that lot. The words of her grandmother strung, strung Kaine, strong. Yep. and she turned away. Don't be nice to me, she said. I don't deserve it. Nothing. Nothing matters anymore. Her tears, held in check for so long, finally began to fall on the muddy ground below. Everyone hates me. They think I cause bad things to happen. They think I'm a freak. I wish I was dead. As Kaine's tears turned to sobs, she felt her grandmother's hand and told us. Despite her advanced age and diminutive size, she was a woman of surprising strength, and Kaine found herself unable to turn away. Don't talk like that, Kaine. It's a river wide and deep that flows between the realms of this world and the next and it grants no mercy to any that attempt to cross him. You got a duty to fight until your last breath. Understand? 
The old woman tightened her grip and tried to still the tremor in her voice. You know the pain of losing someone close to you, kind of. You know because you survived it. As the words hit home, Kaine was struck by the force of her love for the old woman. As a young child, she didn't even know of her grandmother. But when her parents died, the woman quickly accepted her as her own. Grandma, as Kaine called her, was cunning, vulgar, and quick to violence. And the first few years together had not been easy. But with each year that passed, Kaine and her grandmother had grown closer. However, it was only now, sitting in the mud with tears and blood caking her face, that Kaine truly... Kaine truly understood the depths of her affection. Here was a woman who had seen hard times, who had seen death, who had fought through all these things and somehow emerged on the other side. If anyone could understand Kaine's pain and loneliness, it was her. Do... Do I make you sick, Grandma? Of course not. Don't be an ass. Kaine drew her grandmother's moth-eaten shawl around her body and shuddered. But... My body... It's... It's not... Normal. That was normal. And mom and dad wouldn't. Hush, interrupted grandma. I'll not hear another word of this nonsense. You're my granddaughter, and I love you, and if folks have a problem with that, they can just go to hell. With that, the old woman reached out and placed a wreath of dried flowers in Kaine's hair. The skill it took to bend the flowers without breaking the stems or losing a single petal was remarkable, and the beauty of it made Kaine want to cry all over again. Oh my gosh, these are lunar tears. Grandma, you made this for me? Lunar Tears were legendary flowers. Most people could live their entire lives without ever seeing one, yet her grandmother had somehow collected a dozen or more. Kaine reached up and touched the wreath as if she couldn't believe it was real. W where did you find these? Oh, you know, just stumbled on them one day while I was out doing the shopping. The old woman turned away as she was explaining, leading Kaine to suspect that the search had been much more difficult than she was letting on. The pains she took to construct the ornament let alone track down the flowers used in its construction, made Kaine's heart hurt. She reached up and gently adjusted the wreath, admiring the way it felt between her fingers. Didn't quite turn out right, said her grandmother. As she squinted at it, these old hands have trouble with delicate work, but it sure looks good on a pretty girl like you. Kaine blushed and turned away. You. You think I'm pretty? Of course you are. What a fool thing to say. Thank you, Grandma. Her grandmother smiled. We're gonna be fine, you and me. She said, as long as we got each other, we'll be just fine. Foreshadowing. <laughs> kind of took her grandmother's hand. Not really? Yeah, does it count as foreshadowing? Yeah, at this point, you yeah. already know. I, you are, I Post mean, foreshadowing. Still, it's still in the context of, of, of a story that you're reading. Foreshadowing, but after the fact. But after the fact. I'm just saying. I yeah, don't, yes. I always I'm just. Fighting. I just don't like it every time a story is like, ah, yeah, we're gonna be a okay, good buddies. Like, why? Why would you? If we're trying to make it the the inverse of foreshadowing, it would be aft lighting. True. I still prefer hindsighting. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> hindsighting. All right. Kaine took her grandmother's hand in hers, and the two of them struggled to their feet. As they began the long walk home, Kaine gripped her hand with all her might, as if trying to stop smoke from drifting away on the wind. The ran had stopped. Kaine stood beneath the weather vane, watching it spin in lazy circles, no longer caring about the direction it faced when it stopped. I don't need to escape. I have a home now. Grandma loves me, and that's enough. Even if it's us against the world. Kaine let her gaze drift up past the vein and into the cloudy sky. The last faint hints of a rainbow were slowly fading. As she turned and headed for home, the light scattered into a million particles and vanished, seemingly taken away on the breeze. Kaine's dreams, daily life. Oh. We, we don't have, we can trade off now. Uh, in the distance, Kaine heard the steady sounds of an axe striking wood. The noise had purposeful quality to it, as if she was hearing a master woodsman go about his work. The firewood being produced, however, was far from a work of, was as far from a work as art as could be. Pieces of every shape and size were being flung around a barren yard with wild abandon. Anyone trying to stack such wood would probably die of frustration before the job was through. Stupid piece of shit axe. 
and his grandmother flailed away with the axe, filling the air with both splinters of wood and words that would make the most hardened sailor blush. Grandma, called Kaine. What? yelled the old woman, taking her eyes off the wood for a moment. Oh, it's you, Kaine. Don't get too close or I might take your goddamn foot off by mistake. She brought down the axe on a piece of wood, sending chips flying in every direction. One spun past Kane close enough for her to hear a whistle, at which point she decided to step back. Once she uh, scuttled to a safe distance, she cupped her hands around her mouth and shouted, Grandma! Do you need help? I can get you water or lunch or uh, a, a new axe or something? The axe poised to strike another wobbly blow, paused in midair. The old woman considered her grandmother's offer for a moment, or granddaughter's offer for a moment, then smiled. Ha, huh, tell you what, since I'm doing such a piss for job of shopping, why don't you come down here and take over so I can get the water? Shades have been restless lady lately, you know, and I don't want you running into one of them bastards. Relinquishing the axe, her grandmother picked up a long pole with wooden buckets on either end. Gathering water was by far the more difficult of the two jobs, but Kaine knew better than to complain. Once Grandma's mind was set, there was no changing it. Kaine did her best to help with the chores, but Grandma took every task that required to travel to the village. Though she had long... Uh, Though she had a long list of plausible excuses, Kaine knew the real reason. She didn't want her granddaughter to be taunted and harassed by the villagers. Once Kaine moved in, Grandma decided to take up residence a good distance from the area. Out of sight, out of mind seemed like the best policy when it came to the villagers and her granddaughter. And rare were the days when any but the two of them could be found in the rocky acre of land they called home. I enjoyed the solitude, but harbored secret resentment that her grandmother was forced to spend her golden years in such a place. After watching her grandmother leave, Kaine turned her attention to the task at hand. She had never chopped wood before in her life, and soon discovered why the old woman hated the chore. Swing after swing of the axe produced only a tiny crack in the wood, and when she finally managed to connect with the solid strike, the tool embedded itself in the log and refused to budge. Frustrated, Kane swung the axe around her head and threw it, log and all, across the yard. Damn it, damn it! Ah, uh, crap! She suddenly understood the joy her grandmother felt in a good curse. Happier now, she picked up the axe, forced it from the wood, and resumed chopping. She had a natural skill with the blade, but the task was challenging, and blisters soon began to form over small pink hands. This is tough. My logs are all weird sizes. Fitting on her hands and ignoring the pain, Kaine redoubled her efforts. Just as she was developing a rhythm, Grandma returned from the village. Setting down her buckets with a small sigh, she took one look at the logs and coughed out, coughed out a wheezy laugh. Pretty clumsy, girl. You better practice if... if you... Her grandmother suddenly collapsed to her knees causing one of the buckets to wobble precariously. Eyes wide, Kaine dropped the axe and ran to her grandmother's side. Grandma! The old woman shook her head and pointed a trembling finger at the bucket. Get, get the bucket. Can't let it spill. Kaine steadied the bucket with a foot as she knelt by her grandmother. A small bit of water sloshed over the side, and made a new home in the hem of her dress, but Kaine didn't notice. Grandma! Grandma, what's happening? Crazed with panic, she grabbed her grandmother by the shoulders and shook. After a moment, the woman lifted her arms and batted Kaine away. Stop that! Just stop now! she cried, breathing heavily. It ain't like I'm dying. Just tired from the trip is all. Kaine desperately wanted to believe her. But one look at the old woman's shaking hands and worn face told her more than words ever could. Her grandmother had lived a long, hard life, and it seemed the bill was coming due. The time when her grandmother watched over Kaine was ending. Sooner than either of them had feared, the positions would be reversed. 
The next morning, Connie came to the side of her grandmother's bed and took her wrinkled hand. Grandma, you're sick and you need medicine. I'm going to the village. The old woman shook her head and tried to rise, but Connie gently pushed her down. It's all right, she said. I'll be fine. Her grandmother fixed her with a gaze that could melt steel. After what seemed an eternity, she finally lowered her eyes and sighed. Well, I don't like it, goddammit. But I guess I should quit being so stubborn and let you grow up. The old woman watched as Kaine strapped on her boots and made her way down the road to the village. Hours later, as an unseen sun made its way across the dark and rainy sky, she was still watching. Made its way across the sky, huh? Mm-hmm. When when did this phenomena happen, I wonder? The phenomena of the no-dark. Kaine moved at a brisk pace checking her pockets every few minutes to make sure the money her grandmother gave her was still there. Every noise caused her to spin on her heels, making sure she wasn't being stalked by a shade, or worse, Demo and his gang. But she encountered neither tormentors nor shades, and Kane finally found herself at the entrance to the village. The few adults she could see glared sideways at her, then muttered to each other behind raised hands before blinking away into the shadows. Her heart racing, Kaine took a series of rapid, shallow breaths and tried to calm herself. I have to prove myself. I have to help Grandma. I have to be strong. She chanted those words to herself over and over as she slowly made her way. Finally, her eyes settled on a rotund, older woman who was angrily waving her arms in the air and telling anyone who would listen exactly what she thought of Kaine's presence. Hey lady, said Kaine with bravado she did not feel, where's the apothecary? The woman's flabby cheek shook in bewildered anger. How dare this, this thing speak to me, he seemed to say, but Kaine saw that her eyes held a different emotion. Fear. Yeah, we're both scared, lady. Trust me on this one. Which way, Kaine repeated. The woman pointed to a small building on her right before hitching up her dress and stumbling off in the other direction. Kaine cringed, expecting a stone to come flying from the assembled crowd, but none came. Her mind was filled with a strange sense of pride as she made her way to the apothecary, but the new emotion had little time to take root, for as soon as she opened the door she noticed a familiar customer at the counter. It was Demo. He had clearly been sent here on some kind of family errand because his gang of followers was nowhere to be found. Oh my, he sputtered. I mean, uh, uh, what are you doing here, freak? The insult was delivered without force and kind of happily ignored it. Stretching on her tiptoes to see over the counter, she asked the shopkeeper for the medication. Ha, barked Demo. That old bitch finally keel over? Go to hell, Demo. The boy's eyes grew so wide they seemed to uh, they seemed ready to fall out of his head, but before he could let fly a comeback, or worse, a punch, the apothecary told him to knock it off before he kicked them out of the store. Demo slunk out of the shop, cursing Kanye under, under his breath. Once he was gone, she allowed herself to breathe once more, taking a brief tour of the shop while the owner prepared her medication. Countless tiny bottles filled up the cramped store, each with a label written in some indecipherable language. An ocean of aromas assaulted her nose, creating a scent that was exotic, but not altogether unpleasant. Seeing such a variety of supplies gave Kanye a sense of peace. Surely in a world so vast, there would be a place she could call home. On the far wall behind the counter rested a portrait of a stunning young girl. The picture had once contained bright, vibrant colors, but time had worked with magic. They were beginning to fade. The beauty of the work, however, remained undiminished. You like that picture? Kaine turned to find the apothecary with a small vial of medicine in his hand. His eyes were gentle but sad, and they seemed to stare through her and into nothing as he spoke. That's my daughter. I sketched it when she was just a little girl. She's been dead a long time now. Kaine didn't know how to respond. She just stared at the portrait and tried to come up with the right words. Pictures are wonderful things, continued the shopkeeper. They let the ones closest to you live forever. 
He shook his head slightly and looked down at Connie and smiled. Connie heard the medicine. He reached into his sizable green apron and pr produced a handful of old wax crayons. You should have these. There's no one left that I wish to draw. Kaine took an a <laughs> instinctive step back, causing the shopkeeper's face to darken. I should have put on my glasses before I did this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've heard the rumors about you, he said. It's a small village, and word travels quickly. Between you and me, I'm not sure which of them to believe, but I also don't think they matter much. I knew your grandmother, Kali, and I think the way she was driven out of town is just deplorable. Grandma's name is Callie? thought Kaine suddenly. She was still muddling, uh, mulling this new fact over her mind as she reached out and gently took the crayons from the apothecary's hands. Your grandmother is an old friend of mine, he, he said as Kaine scooted away yet again, and I owe her much. I'm willing to wager that she would like you to draw a picture of her. Yes, I think she'd like that very much. Connie murmured a quiet agreement, but inside her heart was bursting. Never before had a villager treated with anything but complete contempt. It was a tiny, almost imperceptible step, but it was a step nonetheless, and with enough tiny steps she might one day discover the rest of the world. When Connie returned home, she found her grandmother asleep in her bed. Her feet were blackened and raw, even bleeding in a, a bit in a few places, leading Connie to think that she'd been pacing around the room until exhaustion finally caught up with her. She placed the medicine by her grandmother's pillow and turned to leave, but found the old wo woman's hand clasped around her arm. Back already, are you? asked grandmother with a yawn. Come here, let me have a look at you. Grandma sat up and examined Kaine from head to toe. Finally satisfied that nothing terrible had befallen her grandchild, she leaned back and allowed herself to relax. Well, how was it? Did those bastards give you any trouble? It was kind of fun, said Kaine with a small smile. No, seriously, it was. It was fun, was it? Asked her grandmother in a voice which implied she believed anything but. Uh-huh. So anytime you need me to run an errand, just let me know. As she spoke, Kaine removed the crayons from her pocket. After a brief explanation of their source, she informed her grandmother that she was going to sketch her portrait. A portrait of me? Ridiculous. No one wants to stare at a wrinkled old crone. But Grandma, it'll make you live forever. Horse manure, said her grandmother, throwing back the sheet from her bed. Living forever would just piss me off. I'll put those crayons away and help with dinner. But Kanye would not relent, and in the end, Grandma found herself leaning against the wall of their house as if posing for a master artist. Kanye took up the crayons and eyed her subject carefully. Just as her grandmother was about to nod off, nod off Kaine finished the work. After staring at it for a bit, she re she released it from her grip and let it slowly drift to the floor. It's it's terrible. It doesn't look like you at all. I'm sorry, Grandma. I thought these crowns would, you know, make drawing easy or something. The old woman's eyes eyes narrowed at her granddaughter's disappointment. Let me be the judge of that she said, ignoring the pain in her back and reaching for the paper. The sketch could have been a person's face. It could also have been a boulder, a lump of clay, or an incredibly misshapen loaf of bread, all rendered in a chaotic array of colors. The old woman stared at the picture for a long time, then slowly wheezed out a laugh. Oh, Kaine, she said between laughter. You truly are my blood. You're as clumsy as me, and I love it. But... Hush. I won't hear any more bull about how ugly you think it is. It came from the heart, and I'll treasure it always. True to her word, the old woman gave the picture a place of honor above the kitchen table. In the days that followed, Kaine would catch her staring into the portrait with a strange smile on her face, an action she interpreted as a silent, mocking laughter. A week later, Kaine could stand it no more and ask her grandmother to take the artwork down. Posh, said the old woman. I'll take this down when they roll me in my shroud. She Oops. pondered this for a bit. I oh my god. I pushed the button. I pushed the button. You, what the, what the hell, man? I know. You... Listen to me, girl. Uh, Seeing this picture makes me happy in a way I've never felt before. And it makes me want, 
makes me want to go on, so that someday you can feel the same happiness. It was a moment that burned itself in Kaine's memory, a perfect blend of pride and love and joy that came together to form a lifelong remembrance. She swore to never forget this moment, to never forget the old woman who made her place in the world possible. Times move on, people and memories come in and out of life like a ghost passing through a hall. But this moment will be different, Kane swore, because I'll remember it forever. Forever. Again, hi. Is this going to be Kine's another one? separation. Right. Uh, again, what, was, what do you call it? What? Foreshadow. Foreshadow, whatever light. Afterlighting. Afterlighting? Hindsighting. I like no, I like his stupid version. But before we begin, I think the I think the the sun of this world is like summer in Alaska. Uh huh. It moves but it doesn't set. Oh okay. Like it's not just stuck. Okay, right, 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 right. It just goes doop. Yeah. Doop, doop. Anywho. It goes doop. That's the sound. <laughs> <sighs> Kinda listen to the sound. A crackling firewood and stared at the black object on her plate. She'd been pushing it around the wooden disc for a good ten minutes, ignoring the bemused stare of her grandmother. Where's the mu- where the music go? Finally, she There's... summoned her courage and gave the object a brief sniff. There hasn't been music for some time. I mean, there's been music no. gently in the background. Yeah, there's been music in the background. Oh, you didn't notice it, did you? <laughs> Maybe this is too low. No, that's pretty high. No, yeah, it's been there. I just didn't notice it. Yeah. A sharp bitter scent blew up her nostrils and made, made its home there, causing her face to twist with disgust. Grandma, I can't believe you want me to eat a bug. <laughs> the old woman threw some more wood under the cooking pot and snorted. It. It's no bug, it's no bug, girl. No, sorry, it's no bug, you fool, girl. There wasn't enough insult in there. Eat the bug. It's a berry, what'd you say? <laughs> Eat the bug. Eat the bug? Okay. Eat it. Bugs are friends, not food. That's not true. <laughs> Bugs are friends. I don't, I don't believe you. you are you playing you Pokemon, Pokemon Go? Yes. What the, what the <laughs> hell are you doing? Are you, what the fuck? Are you serious? This is great. God. I love this. Why in the hell would you be feeding you? Why in the hell would I be feeding you bugs? Yeah, well, it sure looks like a bug, said Kaine. And I think it's burnt or something because it smells terrible. <laughs> With that, Kaine held her nose and threw the berry in her mouth, chewing as little as possible. Oh, yeah, that's terrible, all right. Why, you little brat, laughed the old woman. Look at that sass on you. You've been spending too much time with me, and that's a fact. <laughs> Five years had passed since the moment when Kaine's grandmother saved her from the bullies. As is often the way with two stubborn people, their relationship have, had grown in fits and starts, but moved forward all the same. Meals that used to be somber affair, affairs were now filled with laughter and her abuse in equal measure. Kaine could not remember a time when she had been happier. Again. What was it? What did you, God, I keep forgetting the stupid thing you keep saying. After, oh, after, after light? Like, after lighting? Aft lighting. As the years went by, Kaine started to shoulder more and more of the daily responsibilities. Her grandmother's legs grew weaker by the day, and she could no longer do many of the chores she used to take for granted. And so this morning, Kaine found... Oh, and so this morning, Kaine found... Oh, God. Found Kaine lacing up her work boots with a breakfast-burned berry rolling through her belly. Weird sentence. Where are you going today? Asked Grandma suddenly. There's the music. Kaine looked up surprised. The old woman rarely asks for specifics anymore. Well, I was going to check out the Kelma trees and see if they were right. I thought we could make some jam or something. Oh, and I'm 
going to pick up some flagstones. So I need a need to take the wheelbarrow. Flagstones? What in the hell for? Yeah, how dare you? Connie stared at her grandmother, then held out an arm and swept it around the home. Constructed of, mostly of cloth, rope, and rubble, the old place sagged like a boxer in, in the final round. Would they even know what a boxer is? Yes. In this Boxing point, is a timeless sport. Even when the when the society of that sport got nuked? Correct. Timeless. Okay. There will always be someone to pay people to punch each other in the face. Yeah. Okay. Grandma, a dying cat could chew through this house. I'm going to build a stone wall so we have some protection. The old woman laughed, exposing her toothless grin to the world. God damn, girl. If a bunch of thieves want to ransack this old place, let them come. We got nothing worth stealing anyway. I'm not worried about thieves. I'm worried about shades. People saw one west of the village yesterday. Still playing Pokemon Go, guys. The old woman tilted her head and stared at her <laughs> granddaughter. So unprofessional. Uh... Well, shoot. I don't know why you... I don't know why you have to do it today. You know what? That's fine. I'll just play it into the microphone. Play. You go... It's not... You're not making any sounds. What's the point? Other than... It doesn't even bother me, because... The... the point was to get exactly what I'm getting right now. But it's just... This is just explanation. I just I just need clarification on your on your actions, buddy. Look, it's too easy. Is right, it? Continue. Okay. Richard, you asked for this. Yeah, I know. I know. It's my it's the price I pay for being friends with this son of a you bitch. And, you and Toxin both. <laughs> this is your fault. We can worry about it some other. I wonder if something happened. Grandma, no. If I don't go to the Kelma Tree, we won't eat tonight. You know that. A confused expression passed across the old woman's face. And for a moment, she was a small child lost at a carnival. Yes, she said after a bit. Yes, of course you're right. I'm sorry, Kaine. Lately, it seems my mind is... She didn't finish the thought, instead walking over to her nightstand and gently taking the wreath of lunar tears from the drawer. The flower's petals had aged to a brilliant whiteness, and Kanye thought it was more beautiful now than the day she first received it. You're gonna be a true woman soon, Grandma said as she placed the flowers in the girl's hair. So that means less chatter about shades and building defensive walls and more talk about how beautiful you've become. Exciting. Annoyed, Kaine reached up to remove the garland, but the look on her grandmother's face stopped her hand. You're a beautiful thing, said the old woman, and there ain't another like you in all the world. I'm very proud of you. Again, death flags. <laughs> so... What is that Pokemon called again? That's a Cradily. Just this weird, uh, weird undersea plant thing. That's correct. Just in your That's room. That's exactly what it is. Just in your room, and you just you can't, you can't stop yourself. <laughs> I've turned the, I've turned the, I've turned the phone toward him so he can see exactly. See, what's I can going see. I, I glance over because I, ha it's in the corner of my eye because I'm reading the screen, and he's just like, yeah, you know what? I'm going, I'm going to fuck with him just a little, just a little. Okay, Grandma, that's enough goddamn compliments for one day. Such a mouth on you! Where did that come from? Gee, I wonder. I'll teach you to sass me, girl! yelled Grandma. Suddenly, she lurched forward and grabbed Kaine by the ears, pulling her around the room with a crazed grin on her face. Grandma! yelled Kaine in a quaking voice. Grandma, stop it! What the hell? The old one stared at her and blinked, then slowly held her wrinkled hands out as if it was the first time she had ever seen them. Oh! Oh, I... I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry, girl. Sometimes my mind just... 
Kane thought the look on her grandmother's face was the most heartbreaking thing she had ever seen. Listen, she begun. Began. Maybe I should stay home after all. No, I want you to stay here to keep an eye on. I don't. I won't have you stay here there to keep an eye on an old codger like me. You go get your fruit and your wall and whatnot. I'll be fine. And when you come back, I'll have a nice grasshopper dinner waiting for you. Kaina rolled her eyes, then kissed her grandmother on the forehead and made ready to depart, trying desperately to ignore the worry that was gnawing at the walls of her heart. Kaina could feel the old woman's eyes watching her as she moved down the path. Don't turn around, don't turn around, she told herself, but in the end the temptation was too great. She spun on her heel for one final look and saw a small, bent woman standing in front of the ramshackle hut with a sad expression on her face. Gods, she looks so old now. I like even, usually, <laughs> in such fancy, we don't even establish, have we established that our god, that there's a belief system at all in this world? A little bit, because, uh, or at the very least, those phrases carried through. I suppose, why is it gods, or not, uh, not god, like there's a pantheon that they believe in? Because this is made by Japanese people. Okay. You know what? That's a good answer. <laughs> it's like the wind could reach down and just carry her away. <laughs> Kaine worried about her grandmother all day, causing her to, causing her work to suffer. What little fruit she could collect was tossed carelessly into the wheelbarrow, and she only found a couple of stones before losing interest in the project. Finally, as dusk approached, but no night, just dusk, mm -hmm. she decided to call it a day. Cursing herself for the lack of focus, Kanye pushed the nearly empty wheelbarrow back down the path. As she crested the final hill, she suddenly froze in place. The wheelbarrow fell from her fingers and collapsed on its side, sending a few pieces of wrinkled brown fruit rolling de back down the hill. Her gaze was transfixed by a thick black cloud that hovered just ahead. Tracing its path with her finger, Kainai suddenly felt her stomach knot in on itself. No. Oh gods, no! Her grandmother's house was ablaze, the flames licking up as if trying to touch the sky itself, also hitting more music. Grandma? Grandma! <laughs> Kane ran then, faster than she ever moved in her life. When she tripped on a stone and went sprawling into the rocky ground, but she leapt to her feet and continued running, unmindful of the blood that spilled from her wounded hands and knees. As she got closer and closer, Kane's mind began to race in time with her footfalls. It's too dark. It's too dark. Not just fire. Can't be fire. Too much smoke. Gotta save her. Gotta save her. <laughs> she burst into the front yard and came to a sudden halt. Her worst suspicions confirmed. The smoke from the fire was mingling with the thick, inky blackness of an enormous shade. Confirmed. Shit's The fucked. massive... <laughs> yeah, shit's, yeah, shit's fucked. You know what? Yeah. The massive creature supported itself on three twisted feet and achieved balance through means of a large armored tail. Oh, that sounds familiar. Scales, horns, and claws sprang from the from its body in a random chaotic pattern, giving it appearance of a lizard designed by some insane god. Seeing Kaine, it let out a roar and flicked its tail, sending small whirlwinds spinning around the yard. For a moment, the creature retreated into a shimmering, inky blackness, like a heartless, as if her mind was unable to comprehend that such a thing could actually exist. But then the smell hit her, a blend of rotted, rotted meat and excrement, and the horror became, became real once more. The creature bellowed again, and this time Kaine responded with a scream of her own. Ah. That's your war cry, is it? Ah. Good job. Alright, you bastard, she thought as her scream echoed off the high cliffs around them. It's you or me. Let's go. Like a protagonist. The shade eyed Kainy with a bemused interest, and the shade has the same sentiment. <laughs> then it began to, 
then began looking from her to the house and back again, as if urging her to look at the destruction it had so gleefully wrought. With dread building in her heart, Kaine glanced toward the house. Through the smoke and flame, she spotted a small figure struggling to escape the ruins. Grandma! <laughs> at the sound of her voice, the old woman began waving frantically. She's alive! thought Kaine. She's alive. Kaine's legs sprang to life as she raced across the yard toward the flaming wreckage of the house. Before she could advance more than a few steps, the shade opened its mouth and let a roar powerful enough to uproot trees and send them flying. The blast hit Kaine tumbling through the air before smashing her against the rocky earth. Stars danced in front of her eyes as she tried to remember how her legs worked. Get up. Get up! Repeating patterns of get up and now. As Kaine struggled to her feet, the shades stomped toward the house and pinned her grandmother to the ground with a tip with the tip of a claw. The old woman struggled to move the claw from her stomach, but she might as well have been trying to push a mountain. She coughed briefly, sending a small spray of blood into the air, then collapsed to the ground, her energy spent. Kaine lurched to her feet only to fall back to the earth with a gasp. Her ankles were on fire. <laughs> One or both of them were surely broken. Ignoring the pain that screamed through her body, she began dragging herself across the ground, leaving a drunken trail of dust and blood in her wake. Yo, that, dr that dust is drunk. He has a pr don't, don't talk like that. But you know that dust has a problem. It's trying to change. G grandma! <laughs> Hold on. Just a little longer. <laughs> her grandmother's face was turning blue, her eyes rolling back until only the whites were exposed. Kanye pulled the herself across the ground with a maddening, slow maddening slowness. The distance seeming to increase with every second that passed. The shade glanced between the two women and flicked out its tongue, its giant mouth turning up at the corners. Short, panting breath belched from somewhere deep inside its core. Bastard, laughing at us. She had no idea how such a mindless creature could experience emotion, especially cruelty. But there could be no doubt that the Shade was taking joy in their suffering. Yeah, I see your plan. The Shade moved its claw slightly, allowing Grandma to breathe again. It was clearly keeping her alive, only to snuff out her life when Kaine was close enough to touch her. I'm gonna kill this bastard. Summoning all her strength, Kaine rose to her feet. There was a sickening snap from her right ankle as the foot twisted backward. But she forced it from her mind and began, ho and began hobble to hobble toward the monster. Pulling a small knife from the pouch at her waist, she leapt on the foot that pinned her grandmother and plunged the weapon deep. Give her back, she screamed. Give her back to me. <laughs> it was like stabbing a rock. After a few swipes, the knife broke at the hilt with a dull snap. The shade panted laughter again, then raised its tail and sent it rushing through the air toward the young girl that was latched to its foot. Kaine never had a chance. The tail struck her square in the chest and sent her crashing into the burning wreckage of the home. As she lay on the ground with blood pouring from multiple wounds, a small, weak voice spoke up. Kaine? Kaine's vision blurred, but she forced herself to focus on the sound. Finally, her eyes cleared enough to, for her to make out her grandmother's hands reaching out to her through the smoke. Grandma? Kaine, you've got to run. You can't defeat him. Even with your broken legs. Kaine grabbed the hands and held on with all her strength. Wait, did you just say even with your broken legs? Yeah. Breaking your legs gives you additional strength, everybody. <laughs> just, just, you know, if you're, if you're ever in a, in a boxing match, 
since we're since you know we were talking about some of that earlier, and you really Ex need to defeat that guy, I'll just don't, break I'll, your legs. I was just about to say, don't say he broke. Yeah, you know what? That that inflicts fucking uh, uh, terror on your opponent as this crazy motherfucker decided to snap his own legs. It gives you a buff. <laughs> no, it buffed him. It only works for like five seconds. That's a terrible cooldown, Grandma. <laughs> Come on! We have to go. Again. <laughs> with the broken legs. The old woman coughed loudly. One of her hands slick with blood. Slipped from Kane's grasp and thumped to the ground below. Grandma. No. No. I said run, goddammit! You have to. Have to live. You have to get through. The thought would stay forever unfinished. Before she could say another word, the shade's clawed foot descended, smashing through the remains of the roof and down upon the shattered figure of the old woman. Blood oozed thickly from the gaps in the creature's toes as the terrible, putrid smell assaulted Kaine's nose once again. She stared at the foot, dumbfounded, convinced that what she was seeing could not possibly be real. When the creature finally lifted its, its appendage, all that remained of the leaf was a twisted, unrecognizable mass of rubble and red. So what you're saying is, she escaped. Her grandmother was gone. See? Kane blinked, trying to feel the hands which had been in her hands uh, a moment before. For a fleeting instant, she could remember the warmth of that embrace, the trembling of the fingers, and then the sensation drifted away on the breeze and was gone. Memories flashed through Kane's mind, one after the other, faster and faster, until they became a meaningless jangle of noise. A jangle. Kane screamed then, <laughs> a thunderous sound that echoed off the cliffs and seemed to roll away forever. The shade eased forward, black Ikor. Ikor? How do you pronounce that? I always say Icor. Icor? Black Icor. It pouring, is Icor. Pouring from its mouth and dissolving into smoke on the ground below, the earth, sh the earth shook with every step as it crept towards its prey. Kane's body slowly rose as if controlled by a mad puppet master. Her arms and legs were bent at impossible angles. Her head lolled dangerously to the side, yet somehow she managed to stand. Staring at the shade, her eyes began to glow with a deep red fire. The creature, so confident just moments before, took a slow, hesitant step backward, trying to discern if this broken human could possibly pose a threat. Gane seized the moment. Laughing like a madwoman, she held, she leapt into the air and plunged the shattered hilt of her knife deep into the leg of the shade. The shade shook Kane off like a fly, sending her crashing to the earth once again. Her chest rose and fell slowly, as if a great weight were resting on it. Moist sounds of pain echoed through her mind, something warm and thick oozed from her ears. Moist pain noises. To be fair, that's a, I never heard the phrase moist sounds of pain. Moist. I don't... Who... I don't understand why does, it's noises. just a word. Does that yeah, why? Why do people hate the word moist? I don't under, I like other than the context of how moist is usually used. I doesn't. I don't understand why just it's, the, it's really used for fucking cakes. <laughs> oh, that's that's very innocent of you, Anne. But you know that's not the reason. I'm ace. What the fuck do you want from me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm all I'm saying is it's currently being used in the context of pain. And sounds. Listen, I was just agreeing with you. I'm just saying. I don't understand how how people are just like, yeah, it's the word itself, I just hate it. You're like, oh, I don't think you hate the word. I think you hate the connotation of the word. Because, oh, but whatever. <laughs> Is that? Anyway, it's this tragic scene. Yeah, I know. This tragic, I just, Wait, every what? time I read something, I like to, like to just break the tension with some stupid bullshit. Hey, that's what I do. No, you read that whole scene with nothing. Right, but I can't break the tension with stupid bullshit if I'm reading. I, yeah, you can. I am right now. I can't. Uh, to, uh you'll Focus. get there one day. Focus. No, I exist to do that to other people. <laughs> is that blood? I think it is. 
think I'm bleeding to death. No. Can't. Can't die. <laughs> Grandma told me to live. Deep inside Kanye's mind, something finally broke. The sound, the pain, the smoke, and flames all faded away until all that remained was a single incantation repeated over and over again. Kill it. Kill it. Again. Kill it times, I don't know, five. <laughs> Kill it by another, I won't say times, uh, 15? Kill it times four. As the spark that was Kanye, so as the spark that was Kanye slowly began to flicker and die, she felt her desire to kill and her desire to live blend into one. Oh no, Kanye got desparked. Wait, wrong game. Series. So what's the universe? Yeah, we're, not, we're not talking about Transformers. That's not what I was talking about. Oh, what the hell were you talking about? <laughs> I was talking about magic. Oh my god. <sighs> Only but, Gideon gets desparked. Mm. That's not true. The distance, between, the, murder. <laughs> the distance between heartbeats grew longer and longer and longer. Woohoo! Freedom! 